Hello everybody and welcome to my channel and to my playlist Sewing Made Easy. It's only a couple of days ago when I loaded up two different videos for you as I showed you how you can change a simple one colored kind of shirt or blouse by adding a ribbon flap for the pocket and by changing your front normal buttonholes, the visible ones, by covering it over with a concealed hidden ribbon placket. And as you can see now, I took completely the color of the shirt off because I do have another stripe left and I would like to add it onto the color. I would have two possibilities right now what to do because I'd just like to give you the idea as well because I could make just a normal standing up color onto it. So if that would be something you like, you can do that. Otherwise, you can follow me now in this video as I will show you how I changed the color that was on there by adding this lovely ribbon stripe that I prepared ahead in time. How I did this, you can see in my other videos and I will put you the link in the info box so you can watch that as well. So, you're interested? Then you should stay tuned right now and watch my video. So right here you can see the color from my shirt, which I undone totally, but I didn't undo the sides and the top of the color, but I totally undid it from my neckband. The undone seam that you can see right here on the bottom is usually a 5 to 7 millimeter white seam. So that is again the measurement I want for later on when I will stitch the color in. I do not want more than maximum 7 millimeters on that particular edge. And I did mention that in some other of my videos before that in this particular seam you should never have more than maximum 7 millimeters down there. Otherwise you would have to cut it out because it doesn't lie good a color if there is more than 7 millimeters inside. But that's only on that seam. And as you can see, I did draw it already exactly as I want to cut my color now for the new color that I'm going to do. On the other three sides of the color, I will add one centimeter. You can see it here already on the two smaller sides. And if I'm looking at the color, you can see it had quite a shape to it so far. So I can first draw this on to think about, do I really want it like that? So I go along my finished edge of this color here. As mentioned before, this seam is not opened up. This is my finished edge color from the old color. And as well here, again, I would add one centimeter if I would like to have it exactly in that form. That means my pattern would have to go out in this way with this one centimeter. But the width of that color, if I would do it as the original one, would be too small for what I have planned to do with it. And that is clear if you look at it right here. You can see I put my ribbon application on top of it and it just wouldn't look right with those corners sticking out or even if I put it in the middle, it wouldn't look right. That means I got to make this color a little bit wider in the middle if I want to add this big application onto it. So what I do, I will keep the corners exactly in the same height as my color because I don't want them to go any wider. And I connect from the two edge corners with an almost straight line my two points from the left and the right side. You can slightly shape it towards the middle, but it's not necessary. It depends on you how you wish to do it. So let's ignore totally the two original lines. And we're looking at our straight line that we created new. Now we put our ribbon application on top and decide where exactly do I want to put this. And I decided from the side parts, the small side, I want to put it more or less right there in the middle. And I have to make the decision how wide from the finished edge 
I would like this application to start because it would look funny if it would go all the way into our seam, our one centimeter seam, which we have here, which we will stitch away later on. And my decision now was that my application should start two centimeters away from my finished edge. You can see here, all together, we got three centimeters. Then one centimeter seam will go away and two centimeters will be away from the finished edge. That means it's going to look something like this here. So I go back to the middle of my stripe that I drew onto here, which is five centimeter from the top to the bottom. And from there on, I draw a little triangle, as you can see right here. This triangle is slightly smaller at the moment than my actual width of my application is because later on I will sort that out exactly to the width because I want to make sure not to get, get too wide on it. Meanwhile, I prepared my under and upper color. The under color I'm going to make in the same light color as I got the colors on the application. And I already stuck on one interfacing on each of the parts on this black part, which is the upper part. I put actually two thin interfacings on to make it slightly stronger because I want this color really to stand nice when it's finished on the shirt. And here's one more tip for you. When you have to cut colors like that, first cut it as a big piece, then iron onto your big piece, your interfacing, and when that is on, then take your pattern on both of those parts and cut it in the right shape, because that's the proper way how to do this, in case if I haven't mentioned that to you before. So in today's video, I will mainly show you how to exactly apply the ribbon application right now. Right away tomorrow, another video will follow exactly how you stitch these two color parts together. The reason is, just yesterday I did a German video on special problems that often appear when somebody is stitching a color. Because there are special hints and tips which I would like to point out to you, which mistakes you can make or what is better how to do certain things. And that's why, as I said, the second film on this you will get in about 24 hours after this video. So we continue. Put your pattern on your main material and mark the two points of the positions where you would like to put your ribbon application. Check it again with the exact widths of your ribbon application and maybe make it then on your main material the points a little bit wider if necessary because now the points you will have on your material should be exactly the widths of your actual ribbon because that's very important right now. And you do this, of course, on both sides. And you draw, again, a triangle inwards to the material as you can see here on my color as I got it prepared for you. And now you have to be very brave as we need some very good scissors. And I got special scissors just for cutting my pockets open air for items like that. And when I got these scissors out, I just realized I still got the price ticket on because these scissors are really only used for purposes like that. And then they go away because I want them to be really sharp on the point as that is so important. And now I'm cutting this triangle just on the two lines that I drew directly onto that little point that I made there in the widths of my ribbon application. Not any wider. You've got to be very careful that you really have the exact widths from point to point as the widths of your application is. Now these scissors are fantastic. Look how nicely I can cut exactly with the point of it into the corner. Because now my ribbon part will be pushed into this hole that I got there. And that's what we're going to do right now on the sewing machine. So if it's helpful to you, then draw yourself two long lines, which should be lying underneath the board, invisible later, which means do them a little bit smaller. And now 
push your ribbon right inside this hole you created and stitch from corner to corner exactly down along that part as I show to you right now. If you cut your triangles too wide open, you will have holes on each sides. Or if you cut it too small, as I show you right here as an example, then the part will be pulling because then the ribbon is too tight inside your hole that you got there. Which other words, you really got to have this hole in the exact width as needed for your application. So you got it pushed in right now. And that means now we got to stitch over this part. Now we could do exactly the same already on the other side, on the opposite side. But if you have a sewing machine where the transportation is not so good, then I suggest we do that later. But you push it in already, of course. And now we're first stitching to the two long sides down so it's held in position. So continue sewing exactly on the corner where you stitched your triangle already in position on the left side. Put it on top of your lines that you maybe did draw yourself and of course you got to do a backward stitching there for the beginning and now go along the beige edge if you have the application exactly as I've got mine here. And I do have the light yarn on the top of my sewing machine as well. Because of that, it looks actually is as if I'm not even stitching it down. It's tone in tone. And see, that could happen in case if your machine didn't transport it right. You could have some widths in the bottom and that wouldn't be very nice. So go to the end here, do your back stitching. And now, after that part is done, first side is stitched on. Now we do exactly the same what we've done on the other side. Our ribbon application is pushed into the corners correctly. Look out that you got a real good right ankle right there and stitch this on. And now all you have to do is do exactly the same on the other side here. Go straight down that line, stitch it on either on the light colored part or on the black, whatever you got. That's what you're going to do. Now, coming towards the end, we got two possibilities. I, of course, could finish my sewing right here. But as I've done so much in contrast here, I could think about it to just stitch one more stitch farther on and go down on this corner. I can try this if I don't like it then I open it up again. But it's always a matter of making my own design for my own clothes and seeing what else could I do? What kind of stitching, stitching can I make so it really looks the way I want it and it really looks nice. Now look at that. I like it and that's why I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side as well to make it look evenly on both sides. So I'm not starting sewing in the corner and by the way, yes, you can see that I got quite a big stitch on here. It's a going over stitch. It's not a holding anything together because that I've done with the underneath stitching already when I stitched the triangle down. And something else little I like to mention to you. Now, if you have contrast stitching like me right here, and then don't start stitching back and forth in a corner like that because with a contrast yarn, you would really see this and that doesn't look right. So why don't you start there on the white part so your stitch is really more or less invisible. Do your back stitching on the white part as well. Then go across on your contrast stitching and again finish off in the white part. And therefore, you can see that it looks tidy, that it looks clean. There is no stitches going over each other again and again because that looks unprofessional and you, I know, want to make the best out of your sewing. So, the little leftover I'm cutting off. Maybe I can use it somewhere else. Who knows which other idea I might have on this. And that actually means for today that my part number one on doing this special ribbon application color is finished for today. 
as I mentioned before, I will very quickly do you the second part on this so you also see how you can continue. But if you do it this way, I think you got a little bit, bit of work to go on by first. So please do that and wait for my next video. But until then, I would like to say a special thank you to all of you for watching my videos. Give me a comment on where you're watching me from anywhere in this big, wide world, little world. So I'm looking forward to that and I'm pleased to sometimes be able to help you with some of your sewing projects. I say goodbye, stay healthy and I'll be around again. And as I like to say in my language, tschüss.